afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Turk Dutch Starcom. This is the QA of Star Wars with, of course. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I just know his last name is so well. Uh, Richard Yes. And uh, coming. Oh, look at my mic. Oh, good. One, two, one, two. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Are you all sitting well? Yes, yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, who wants to ask the first question for this Q&A? Yeah, we've got one. Hi. You, every one of you has a role in different Star Wars films. Can you explain us a little bit about your, about your experience in that? Gosh, okay. <laughs> well, okay I'll, I'll, I'll have two quick things. I was in the, we'll do it chronological because I was. Um, I don't know where to start. I was in, I was in Los Angeles, and I, my agent sent me to an audition uh, at Bronfman Studios, which is an old-fashioned film studio in in Hollywood, where she told me that Lucas was making this space western. <laughs> and um, I agreed to go along, and I would be videotaped. This is the first time they did videotape auditions. So there was this very old-fashioned video camera with one-inch videotape rolling. And we read, <clears throat> every actor that went in read uh, the hand Solo Greedo scene. So we had a little casting assistant who was reading Greedo, and then I, and everybody was reading Han Solo. And the odd thing was, is I did all this stuff. I was like really cool with it, laid back, you know. And then lo and behold, I think Harrison saw my audition tape. Because then he just did what I did in my audition, but I didn't get the part. <laughs> really, really not happy with that. Um, but I did that and then forgot about it. I literally forgot about it. I, but at the same audition, I was cast in Carrie as the high school principal in Cary, because Brian De Palma was sitting in on the, uh, on the auditions. He had me down for an interview, cast me in Cary, and then Cary wasn't made for another year and a half. And by that time, I got really disillusioned with Los Angeles, and I was in love with an actress, and I came back to London. And two weeks after being back in London, I was offered Star Wars. And they offered me a part, and I read the script, and I turned down the part because it was only two lines. <laughs> and a month later, they offered me Admiral Mahdi, and I looked at it, and it was six pages of dialogue, and it was like, and there was something, you know, there was a really, it was a good part. I had no idea what Darth, what, I knew Darth Vader was the bad guy, but had no idea what, what he looked like. Didn't know what the Death Star looked like, it was just a good part. So I took it and did it. So, I mean, I always tell people my best career move as an actor was turning down Star Wars the first time they asked, because... <laughs> A friend of mine did that part, and he didn't do it. George sent him home at lunch. So he, they cut the scene. So that was my, that's my best story on Star Wars. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, if, do you want me to tell you about how I got into Star yeah. Wars? Okay. Um, well, I can go back, back to 1983. <laughs> um, well, same, similar thing. My agent called up and said that there was an audition for this um, film, and I had to go and see the director. And I had to wear a bikini, and um, and that was it. And I, I questioned it because I thought this is very strange. I have to go and see this this director in the film and wear bikinis. I was talking to the film studios, and um, he said to me, "Look, you know, we're doing this film, but we're not allowed to say what it is." Um, and I said to him, "Well." I don't mind what it is, as long as it's not a blue movie, I don't mind, because that's not what I'm trying to do as a dancer. He said, no, 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 but do you dance? I said, yes, I do. And he said, do you have your bikini on? And I said, yes, I do. And so he said, would you just walk up and down so I can just see how you move? And I went, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll just walk up and down. And he said, that's fine. He said, well, what we want to do is call back a few of you to dance. And so um, I said, okay, fair enough. When I hear from you, that would be great. So they called me back, and we did this grueling dance audition. And we kept on saying, what is the film about? And they said, we'll tell you after we finish the audition. And I was getting changed. And uh, they, someone danced and said, what is this film about? And, they, and I only heard that. <gasps> and I said, what is it? What is it? And they said, it's a new Star Wars movie. Or it's the Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I went, oh, right, OK. And at the time, I was doing the show called Cats. And um, the choreographer who was um, doing the audition, he, I took him back up to town. He said, look, Femi, I think you've got the job. but..." 
I mustn't say, and when I got back to the stage door, I got a message saying that you've got the part of Ula, which is great. And then we can sort of forward that and go back, go to 1996, and I was back in New York for holiday, and I, I was sending a friend, and she said, we just got this call from this casting director, Robin Gerland, and they are looking for you because they want to redo your scene in Jedi. And so um, I called them up and they said, would you like to come back and reshoot your, your, your um, scene? And I said, oh, I'll check my diary. And uh, two weeks later, I flew to San Francisco and did the special edition. So that's how I got into it. Thank you. That's actually one of the best parts of the special edition. <laughs> the, rest of, the rest of the stuff they did in the special edition wasn't very good. Oh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't very good. Is this my turn? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is 1998. Um, I just started modeling, and uh, it was a, a casting that I had to go to. But they didn't tell me what the film was about, uh, what, what film it was, because they were very secretive. Um, so anyway, I went for the casting. I was in Lisa Studios, and uh, they said to it's a, it's a big film, and I have to be assistant to the chancellor. So they asked me to do a, a sympathy, you know, look, which uh, I tried that. And um, um, so next next time they, they gave me a call and said, I've got it. So I, I went for the job, and um, but they made a costume for me. They fitted me out in the costume. And when I got on set, I didn't know still what was going on because they didn't tell me what the film was until I realized I looked at the director and it was George Lucas. <laughs> and sitting beside me was uh, Terence Stamp. Um, so it was, you know, it was a, um, a great experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, didn't, they didn't even necessarily see the script or anything. They're so secretive about the whole thing until you actually got... I don't know about you, Richard, but you know, the few lines that I had, I didn't know at all until I actually got on set. And they said, oh, have you... You know, these are the lines that you have to say, and I had to learn them like that. But um, they're very hush hush about it, so it's interesting to hear about the Kami similar experience. Well, I was on the first one, so they just sent me, I sent, they sent me two scripts, and they have both been stolen as well. I would love to have one of those scripts. Oh. Yeah. Um, but now, of course, it's sent by a, uh, a friend of mine did Indiana Jones, did the first Indiana Jones, and they sent it with a secure courier that you have to sign a disclaimer agreement. Um, before you even accept, before you even open the envelope. Um, so now it's, you know, the security is so tight then, they just, just toss in these scripts out. I mean, Gary Kurtz told me a story that he went into the script typing service at L Street one day uh, to pick up some rewrites, and he looked, and in the trash can was George's original handwritten script that they had just transcribed. And then somebody threw it in the bin. He went, whoa, and he got it out. Otherwise, that would have been lost. So, I mean, that, but of course, then one film later, it's all different. Um, and of course, when my friend got the script for, uh, uh, for Last Crusade, no, not Last Crusade, what was the first name he had? Raiders. Raiders, Raiders yes. He, he, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He got, he got on the phone immediately and told everybody it was the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> so he ignored it completely. He still got the part, actually. All right. Who wants to pop to the next question? Don't go all at once. <laughs> well, if you just send a waiter over. Or maybe we could do some, maybe we could bowl a few frames then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then I, uh, well, I have one. Okay. Uh, just to entertain you guys. <laughs> there are, are a lot of you know, Star Wars characters in the entire Star Wars universe. If you could pick one to choose, would you stay with the character you played, or would you say, one, you know, I want to be Skywalker, or I want to be Princess Leia? Well, probably Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so, it's not so. Yes. No, I don't know. I mean, I guess the best character in the whole, probably the whole series, has got to be Han Solo, really. Yeah, I mean, that was just... Uh, and it's a shame what they did to him in the special edition, quite frankly. That's my feeling. Um, but, you know, just, you know, he, Han shot first. He, he shot first. Absolutely. <laughs> No, I, I, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy with the part that I played. And when I read it on the screen, I'm, I'm happy with it. And I, I think all the other characters are fantastic, and it made the whole piece. So, okay. I'm satisfied. So, yeah, 
I'm, I'm very happy with my character as well. I think um, they take the artist and they sort of design from, you know, taking up using their personality and making it into the character because when I first started, they didn't even have the name. I think they developed it afterwards mm -hmm. to suit the person. That's, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Or George is just lazy. <laughs> She's so lazy. I'd like to hear more about that. Is she really so lazy? Is he what? Is he so lazy? Is oh no, he's not. It was a joke. It was a joke. It was on the internet, George. No, no, it's not no, true. It's not lazy at all. No, George, George he's is. He's very shy. He's, he's shy, very, man. very shy. Yeah. But he's a really, really nice man. Really easy he, yeah. He's incredibly diligent. He does, he, but he's got the whole film running in his head, mm -hmm. and so you just go with him. If he tell, asks, asks you to do something, he, you know, you just go with it. You know, so he's not, he's not. You're not lazy, George. <laughs> and he also, he gives you guidelines what you want, to, what he'd like to see you do, and then he leaves it up to you to bring what you can bring to the character. Well, he did with me anyway. Not that I, that was that much, but. He, yeah, he said, well, Femi, you know, we just come down the shoot and we just roll over and just do whatever you want to do. And that's my death seat. So. Okay. But he's, yeah, he's, he's a lovely man, isn't he? Yeah, yes. He really lovely man. Absolutely, yes. So, anyone of you got a question? Yeah, we've got one. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say was your uh, favourite Star Wars movie out of all six? Oh, Empire. Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't see all of them, so I can't really say. Oh, the ones you've seen so far. Why? Yeah. Why? Oh, why? Well, I think it's just the most cohesive film. It has the most conflict in it. Yes, and it's the best directed. I mean, that it really is. It really is very brilliantly done. Um, but it has the most going for it. I mean, I came home a couple of years ago, went over to visit my son at his mother's house, and, and he, I walked in, he was watching Empire. And I said, what, what are you doing? What, why are you watching Empire? I mean, whole thing like Star Wars in our house. It's like, why are you doing that? You know? And we said, and we watched it, and I hadn't seen it, I haven't seen it since special, uh, the special edition came out. And I just thought, wow, it's really brilliant. You know? It is. So we should go by uh, the special edition. No, probably the original. I don't actually, actually, the special edition of Empire is much better than special edition of Episode Four, because it's nice to see Cloud City as it should have been. You know, I mean that that's a technological leap that they that they made brilliantly. So, I yeah, special edition just doesn't work in Episode Four because oh thank you, because it was very. Uh, the whole film was done out of like necessity being the mother of invention. They didn't know what they were doing. I mean, that was kind of the fun of it. And some days things would work at ILM, which was that time in a garage in the San Fernando Valley, where they were filming all this stuff. Yeah, they were just—it was just a bunch of you know computer guys who never done anything like this before, but thought they could. So some days they would get reports back from Los Angeles that things had gone really well. And then on other days, things had gone really badly, and they didn't shoot any film for two days that was usable. And everyone on the set was a bit, oh God, this is going to be tough. And it was, so it was all, everybody was kind of like jumping in and having a go. And, that, and we all felt that as actors as well. You know, I mean, George as a director, so I'd say, can I try this? Or, you know, and I said, well, I, I think I should have a mid Atlantic accent because everybody else in the scene is British. You know, except for Dave, who was from Bristol, and uh, so you know, so I said, he let me do the. He wanted, you know, he said, yeah, the, do a Mid Atlantic accent. You're right, and it was just that fun of it, you know. Um, and I, I worked on other big films afterwards, and they were so formulaic; they were all planned out from the get go. And, and Star Wars was fun; it was fun to do. Yeah, okay, we're having so much fun here. But who wants to ask? The last question. The last question. The last We're question. Just, just got rolling. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is one of So you want to come back again? So if you want to ask the honor to ask the last question. Are you guys working on any uh, interesting movies now? Or are you doing something completely different? Well, well that's interesting. I'm glad you asked that because um, I decided after, I won't reveal how many years I've been in the business, quite a few, but we can work it out. Um, um, I had a family and you know, they've sort of grown up now enough to, to do something else. And 
for me, the business has changed a lot. Um, back in England, there's not you know, the films that used to be, the, the, all the, the televisions, TV reality shows and so forth. And I just thought I didn't want to go back into it. So I'm, I'm going to be trained. I'm going to go into interior design. Not decoration design, so I guess design is... What, for film? No, no, what, you know what, it could be film, I could be present on television, it could take me anywhere, but I felt I've had enough of the, I mean, sure, I've still got my agent, and, you know, he called up the other day and said, would you, you know, there's a possibility of something, but I'm putting my focuses into something else as well. Well, I'm, for the same reason, because the film industry and the television industry is so, it's dire in the UK. I got involved in, in helping to set up a small boutique hotel about three years ago and that has just opened last April and that was very much like being involved with the film project I mean it was like producing it was great fun to do now it's getting in it's hitting its stride I'm now thinking of going I'll stay with it and hopefully we might open another one which would be great and then I would go up and help set that up but I'm actually working on a film project with another actor at the moment We're trying to get set up unfortunately but a very good friend of mine is uh, was an accountant. Is now a film financing. So that's it. <laughs> but yes, that really does help. Um, and I'm working on a fan film, but it's kind of like Orson Welles making a movie. I can I only go spend a couple of weeks on it, then I have to go off and do something else. So I'm trying to do this fan film. But I'm doing it. In, I couldn't film it the way I wanted to film it, so it's going to be done in animation. So I've been learning a whole new side of the the, the industry. It's a whole new thing, and it's wonderful. Um, and I've just recorded about uh, half of the performances now, and I've got somebody out doing some storyboards, and that is, but that's going to take a long time to do, but it's, uh, it's been fun, and it's a very good script, it's a very funny script. I wrote it. <laughs> is it a Star Wars fan film? It's a Star Wars fan film, yes. It's what happens to my character after I escape the Death Star before it's exploded. <laughs> I still enjoy what I'm doing because every job is uh, very different. Um, I, I tend to do quite a lot of commercials, um, and uh, one of the other film I did was Revolver. I was the assassin waitress in that. Um, so I, I still like to keep doing this, but also at the same time I have to probably do up my flat as well and <laughs> decorate that. And because um, I used to do a property market, and I probably go back and do something like that as well. Okay. All right. And this is the end of the stars Q&A. I want to thank you all. Give a round of applause for this. <laughs>